Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel. This is Rokka. And welcome also to rainy Norway. We are on a family vacation here, a nearby town. And I figured that once we are in Norway, might as well go outdoors and enjoy these views a bit. So my plan was to go to Rohkumborri National Park. I'm actually very close by. I believe those mountains over there are part of the national park already. But <laughs> we've been now going for 14 kilometers, something like that, 14, 15. And to the place where I envisioned that we would go today, there's still another 14 or 15 kilometers to go. The terrain is so difficult and as far as I can tell there are no established trails or even like bigger game trails or something like that that uh, the going is very slow so I figured now it's time to stop this was the first spot that I could find that has good wind coverage thanks to these rocks and I will try to set up my shelter right over there I think I can make it work, just to maximize the wind cover. Let's do that. Let's maybe get some food going and let's chat some more about the situation and the place we are in. Welcome along. Here's a good tip when setting up your shelter that has a center pole. Once you've kind of figured out when you want to place the center pole, grab your hiking pole or whatever stick you can find and dig a small hole for the center pole. This will vastly improve how sturdy your shelter is going to be. And also while you're at it, if you have a shelter that has a weak spot right up there, then it's also a good place to store your tents stuff sack. So just take your center pole, put the stuff sack between the shelter and center pole like so. Then into the hole. And there we have it. One floorless TP shelter on the rocks, just as ordered. The good thing about setting up a shelter right here on the beach is that there's plenty of these rocks that I can use to put some weight on the stakes and that thing is not going anywhere. <laughs> I did run out of room from this side but at least this guideline over here gives me some uh, headroom inside the tent so it's not that big of a deal. Everywhere we've been so far during this week here in Norway is just magnificent. You guys have it well over here. That is for sure. This is the setup for tonight. I'm using a wide lens there on the GoPro so you can see it all at once. The tent is not as big as it looks like over there. but. As per usual, I have my bivy bag, inflatable sleeping pad, and my sleeping bag already here. So sleep system is ready to go. And that's something that I always do first, so I don't have to worry about it when, you know, we're losing daylight and whatnot. So it's all set up, plus it gives me a comfy and uh, dry surface to lay on. Just boiling some water over there and Rokka is taking a nap, as Alaskan Malamutes always tend to do when they are not moving around. Very efficient animals in that sense. Not perhaps the brightest of dog breeds, but very efficient and strong. It ain't much. That is the first time I've seen the sun in three days, four days. 
So yeah, it has been raining a lot on our trip to Norway, but apparently it is possible to get some sun up in here. Ooh, it got warm immediately. While I'm waiting for my tactical food pack to hydrate and get ready, I figured we could already start by good old knäkkileipä, knäkkebröd. We have some sample for Kallen Mätitahna. Unfortunately nothing in English, but it is... What is it called? Fish eggs, caviar. That stuff that is smoked and salted and made out of turska. So that would be cod, maybe? Codfish? Cod caviar, maybe. Don't quote me on that. And when that ends, we have still some tuna paste as well. So as mentioned, we are here on a short trip to Norway with the family and I'm here on this camping trip, which is even shorter. And I figured instead of us going to the place where I thought that we would be spending the night, I wanted to stay here because by the time we would have reached that point, we would be quite exhausted. Of course, I don't know the terrain, if it's really that bad as it is over there. It's very difficult cross-country terrain. So, you know, maybe I would have had time to set up the shelter, eat and go to bed. And then tomorrow I would have had to come the whole way back. So it doesn't make much sense to me. I also didn't plan on coming this way. But I think it just goes to show that maybe sometimes less planning is, is, is okay. As long as you have the right gear and the right experience, you know, you don't need that much planning when going outdoors. I hear what you're thinking. But Joel, you are in Norway. Why don't you go fishing? Well, that was kind of my plan, going to the national park. There's only like one big water area there, a bigger lake that has some fish. Rest of the smaller lakes are too high up in the mountains and they're naturally fish free. So yeah, that was the plan. Going there, do a bit of fishing and just relax. But I underestimated the time that I have available and the difficulty of the terrain. So here we are, but don't worry. I think we might try some fishing later on tonight. You guys just haven't seen the wind. It was super strong throughout the time when we hiked here. And during the last maybe three, four kilometers, we actually hiked right by the shoreline because we just couldn't find a good trail up there. So we hiked along the shore, very nice kind of rocky, but nice beaches. And the wind was quite brutal as well throughout the whole time. And this was one of the first spots that we could find some shelter from the wind just by this kind of a natural formation of this little bay we have here. The wind was blowing quite a bit towards the shore and my fishing gear is very minimalist. So it's not like I would have anything heavy duty enough to cast a long way to the lake. So we'll have to walk around a bit find a good spot and give it our best shot. But that said, I cannot really rely on getting any fish. I haven't been in this area before. I haven't talked with anyone who has been fishing around here. So that's why tactical food pack and chicken noodles seems to be our late lunch today. I wasn't kidding when I said that my fishing gear is very minimal. And 
the primary reason being that I don't plan trips, hiking trips, camping trips around fishing. So I don't go fishing and then hike to get there. I just go backpacking or hiking. And if there happens to be a spot where I can also fish, then it's nice to have some fishing gear with me to do that. So to start off, my lure box or tackle box, not much in there. And honestly, even this is probably more weight and bulk than I would want to carry. A small tape measure, not relevant here, but in Finland you have to be a bit more uh, careful about the size of fish that you get. This one is actually pretty handy. This is foldable fillet knife. And there you go. Bendy and very sharp blade like this is, in my opinion, a must for preparing any fish. At least my own like camping knives are so um, beefy and big that it's very hard to do even the basic processing of smaller fish with those. And of course, the main star of the show, this is something that some of you have been asking about in some of my previous videos. So this is M-Rod, I believe M-Rod Packing Rod is the official name of this setup. So here you can see it, it's in two pieces. And yeah, this pretty much made it possible for me to start also doing a bit of fishing on my camping trips. So basically you just push it inside itself and twist and there you have it. We are good to go. Let's go give it a shot. This has been the driest day of the week so far, but there's still some rain every now and then. But nothing that a good cup of berry juice wouldn't fix. There's plenty of berries to go around here. Add in some boiling water and there you go. I might have to pick some more for morning breakfast as well. But the day is definitely still not over. <laughs> I've been laying down here, having the door open when it doesn't rain, and just looking at the lake and the mountains. Yeah, life is good. Life is good here. The funny thing about mountains is we don't have any mountains in Finland, so there's not like I would have grown up around mountains or anything like that. And I've been only a handful of times in countries where there are actual mountains. But still, for, I don't know, years, I've had this feeling and this sort of longing towards mountains, which is very strange, um, you know, considering the facts that I just laid out. We did plenty of trips to Lapland when I was a kid, but in Lapland we just have fells, so it's probably not even that. There's just something about mountains and these kind of landscapes over here in Norway that um, seem to seem to be scratching the itch. Seems like the wind has died down a bit. That's a good thing. Although the rains have been more consistent now. We've had almost no break in between the showers for the past couple of hours. So what can we do 
instead, now that we are pretty much stuck inside the shelter. Well, that's right, we can always eat. <laughs> we have some tactical food pack, rice and veggies, reinforced with, of course, kuivaliha kundi or rough cut beef jerky, greasy pork jerky, smoky barbecue. And I've said this before, but I say it again, this stuff is the dynamite when it comes to cold weather camping. In 100 grams, it has 32.7 grams of fat and 36.6 grams of protein. And of course, four grams of salt. So a really fatty, high protein, high salt content. Rokka, peruuta vähän. Kiitos. Which is of course everything you need when you are outdoors in a cold climate. And I guess you could call this cold climate. Looks like we have roughly five degrees inside the tent. So seems like a reasonable time to throw together a bit of a tortilla party in here. So rice, veggies, pork, jerky. Ay, 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 ay. Cheers. Mmm. Yes. I also just found out that this Trangia cutting board thing is actually the perfect size plate for this. I think this might be medium sized tortilla wraps in Finland. Quite small tortillas for my taste, but perfect for outdoor cooking. Mm. I was seriously considering about taking a stove with me, but as I didn't know what kind of terrain it was, you know, if you're up there where there is no trees or anything, so it might be a bit difficult to use use a stove without any wood to burn in. But if I would have it now, there would be a lot of this dry wood to burn. stuff. Oh, these pieces are like paper thin. Hopefully tomorrow we will get some clear skies. I think that is it for today. Hopefully we get some better weather tomorrow. If not, then, you know, it is what it is. I think tomorrow I will definitely show you guys more of the hiking part of things, as you've come to expect from my videos, I guess. But also because uh, these first couple of kilometers right by the shoreline are actually quite nice. So hopefully we get some nice weather and not super heavy winds blowing to our faces when walking that way, but we'll see about that in tomorrow. All right. Huomenta.
Good morning, and cheers. You know, I've had my morning coffee in worse places than this. In Finnish, we would say this whole camping trip, this location and everything else has been kind of onni onnettomuudessa. So welcome back to learning Finnish with Joel. Basically, it means that even though something sort of unfortunate, unexpected happened, which in my case was that I didn't end up in Rohkunpaaren National Park, the place where I envisioned us being, still something good came out of it. And this is definitely a trip to remember all in all. Cool spots, good experiences, very interesting hike to get here. So yeah, but I'm not done with that national park just yet. I'll definitely come back for a rematch at some point. It is still windy, but not as windy as yesterday. And as you can see behind us, somebody up there did listen to me. We did get some sun. At least we have some for now. Still plenty of clouds overhead. But if the sun keeps blazing like that, I'm gonna have to take this shirt off. You might be wondering that isn't this kind of terrain very difficult to walk, especially for the dog. This can be very treacherous, but as you can see, the dog is constantly looking a bit downwards, figuring out where to put his paws. Same as me. I have to, of course, Woo! see, be careful where to put my boots as well. And yet, all of this stuff is a lot easier to traverse than what's up there. And trust me, we tried. There's just so much that brush, the undergrowth, small trees and everything. It's very slow going. Well, once again, I'm kind of showing the general direction for the dog and then letting him decide where's the best path to take. That is actually a very substantial lake. From that end, the far end, east to west, roughly 35 kilometers long. But then it's only one and a half kilometers wide for the most parts, sometimes even less. I suspect that that's closer to just one kilometer to that cabin over there. It's a long lake. And as you would expect, really clear waters. And as far as I can tell, also good stuff to drink. I think the rock agrees. We are going to take a small break now, have some snacks, and then navigate our way to a nearby ATV trail 
and he used that as a shortcut for the rest of the way today. With that all said, thanks for joining us on this little outing in beautiful, beautiful Norway. My name is Joel. Here's Rokka. You have been watching Travel Outdoors. We will see you all in the next one. Bye. Hey. Now, Vaporoja. <laughs>